As coronavirus vaccines are being rolled out across the country, many Americans are wondering when they will be able to resume a normal pre-pandemic style of living. More than two and a half million people have already received the vaccine in the United States, but experts project at least 70% of the U.S. population or an estimated 230 million people need to receive the vaccine before the country can, receive, can achieve herd immunity. This means it will take months before Americans are able to go shopping, attend concerts, or travel freely outside of the United States. However, the vaccine does not guarantee a person's safety alone. That is why several tech and travel companies are teaming up to create a digital health passport. The goal is to provide an easy way to track a person's health history and prevent further spread of COVID-19 on a global scale. For more on this, I'm joined by CBSN technology reporter Dan Patterson. Dan, thanks for joining us. What is a digital passport? How would this work when we actually get to travel? Yeah, good to see you. So this is an app on your phone or even built into the operating system of your phone that kind of verifies your vaccine status. Uh, it works with maybe trusted partners. So if you think airlines right now, uh, JetBlue, Lufthansa, Swiss Airlines, United, Virgin, and a few others are uh, participating in a similar program. Uh, it's kind of like a certificate on your phone that will let you interoperate with those travel partners, maybe hotel partners, and uh, other types of businesses that would be uh, kind of air quotes back to normal business. Not all vaccines are created equally. Uh, Dan, how, how does this factor in the ability to use that uh, digital passport? Boy, this is fascinating. Right now, that's totally unclear. Each vaccine is different, uh, and your digital passport uh, could maybe indicate which vaccine you have, the efficacy of that vaccine, how long it's been since you had that vaccine. Right now, there are so many unknowns, but, you know, the one thing this could do is say, you know, here is at least a, some verifiability that you have been vaccinated and maybe the time since that. And because this is an app, what does this mean for the large number of people who don't have smartphones, don't use apps, yeah, don't have really ready access to the Internet? What does that mean? Yeah, I'm really glad you asked this. It's a big concern as well. So according to Pew Research, 96 percent of Americans have a smartphone. But, or have a telephone, uh, a cell phone, but that drops to 81% when it comes to a smartphone. And globally, it's only 45% of the world's 7 billion people have a smartphone. So inherently, a lot of people will be left out of this. And, you know, typically when it comes to economically marginalized people or those who live in developing countries, that might create more distance uh, between uh uh, those who are able to uh, function with a COVID vaccine and those who are not. What are some of the problems that developers are facing when they're trying to create an app like this? And of course, when you're creating something that can be used on a global scale, there's going to be privacy issues. Uh, talk about that. Yeah, so um, this is one of the favorite things developers actually love to talk to uh, talk about. I reached out to um, a, a number of app developers as well as um, um, the World Health Organization and some other places, <clears throat> excuse me. And one of the biggest challenges developers tell me is that standardization across operating systems and even different versions of operating systems. So if you're on Android, you might not be on the same version of Android as your mm -hmm. neighbor. That's a big challenge, but it's a challenge that developers tell me they kind of like working on because it's programmatic and they can use code to kind of solve this. Uh, other challenges are the difference between the Android and the iOS operating system, certainly privacy and security. We saw at the beginning of the pandemic, Google and Apple rolled out something similar. It was a contact tracing, air quotes, app that was also built into the operating system of your phone, but it relied on Bluetooth and there were some technical challenges. And when it comes to privacy, it's just almost impossible to assure that your data is separate from your identification or your real world ID. So uh, there are some big tech challenges here, but the tech challenges seem to be the ones that developers most look forward to trying to solve. So not only do you have to worry about losing your passport, you got to worry about having enough battery life in your phone. Dan Patterson, thank you very much.